Hi everyone, welcome to the next video on the QA syllabus uh, for CAT 2025. We're going to discuss geometry today. Now, geometry as I've always noticed is the area which you either love or hate. You know, there are very few people who are in between that, okay, I can manage geometry. There are some students who are very good at geometry and then there are a lot of students who hate it completely. Let's dive deep into it and let's understand why that happens. What are the areas you need to revise for geometry? What do you need to do and so on. So in terms of weightage, it's the third most important area, first being arithmetic, then being algebra, and then geometry. Weightage approximately in the last five years has been approximately 15%. As I said, a lot of students find this a problem area. Now, now comes the major part about geometry. Requires a lot of conceptual knowledge. You need to know each and every concept well. Very frankly, you know, when I look at geometry as a whole, if you look at the 8th standard geometry, the 9th standard geometry, and the 10th standard geometry, that is what you are learning in all what you have for CAD geometry. Every single thing which was taught to you in 8th, 9th, and 10th, maybe very little what was taught to you in the 11th, but mainly 8th, 9th, 10th, and that is what you really, really need to work on. So if somebody has, say, a lot of time and is preparing a long term, uh, long term for CAD, can always go back to your school books of 8th, 9th, 10th, revise everything in geometry from there and then come and study for CAT, I'm sure they'll do very good. Okay, so let's start with the topics. Obviously, there is lines, angles and triangles. Lines and angles are the basic part. Triangle is the most important part over here. Has around 17 questions. When I say there are 17 questions, I'm, I've not done the breakup, but if I just had to take a chance, I would say out of these 17, maybe 14 would be out of triangles and a couple will be from lines and angles. Quadrilaterals and polygon, one very important area has around 18 questions in the last five years. Circles has around 10 questions. Then there is 3D figures and mensuration, which is around eight questions. Coordinate geometry. Now, coordinate geometry can always be a this, you know, that is it actually coming going to come in geometry or it can go in algebra? Well, I put it in geometry normally, so I'm just keeping it here. Approximately five questions. Trigonometry, three questions. And I know as soon as you heard, a lot of people hear trigonometry, they they that itself is kind of, you know, unnerving for them and they want to say, okay, this is what we want to leave. So very frankly, not too much is asked. You can leave if you want. Uh, it's not an area which you should really, really worry about. Yes, you can know some basic stuff. So like in the area of triangle when trigonometry is used or when area of parallelogram trigonometry is used, even if you know that basic stuff, it is good enough. Okay, let's go ahead. Concepts and lines, angles and triangles. So obviously, what are the types of angles? Acute angle, right angle. Uh, obtuse angle and so on. Parallel lines and transversal, what kind of angles are formed when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, like the corresponding angles, alternate angles, and so on. Classification of triangles based on sides and angles. So based on sides can be uh, an isosceles triangle, an equilateral triangle, or a scalene triangle. Based on angles, it can be right angle triangle, acute angle triangle, and so on. Then what are, what are the properties of triangle? Then there'll be some basic properties of triangle, which is like going to any triangle, like sum of all uh, angles has to be 180. The exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the remote interior angles and so on, so on. Sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side. Very important property, right? Has been you asked a lot in CAT, you know? So those are the properties you really need to work very well on. Then there is congruency and similarity of triangles. This is completely from school days. You know, knowing your school day geometry well will really help you with congruency and similarity. Properties of equilateral triangle, knowing equilateral triangle alone, you know, like how to find the area of an equilateral triangle, the height of an equilateral triangle, what other properties, like a 30, 60, 90 theorem comes a lot in equilateral triangle and so on. And then there is triplets of Pythagoras, know your Pythagoras triplets well. Once you know your Pythagoras theorem and triplets, your calculation goes very fast. You know, you can start judging questions very quickly. Like there are so many questions in CAT I have seen where there is a right angle triangle. And the three sides are in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 5, which is the most common Pythagoras triplet. So know these things and your speed will increase drastically. Uh, continuing with, again, the, the same topic, you know, there are more theorems and more properties over here. So properties related to median, altitude, angle bisector and perpendicular bisector. You know, we've created a long video around these four things, four different videos, in fact, around these, you know. What happens when there's a median, Do you, uh, the three medians, where do they meet? They meet at the centroid. The centroid divides the median in the ratio 2 is to 1. That gives you the Apollonius theorem, which I've already put down over there down. 
and so on, so on. You know, so many things can be learned from that part. Knowing each of this really well is important. In fact, you know, a lot of students only know that much. The three medians meet at the centroid. The three altitudes meet at the ortho center or whatever, whatever. Accordingly, people just know that much. You need to know more things according to me. Properties of a right angle triangle, as I said, 30, 60, 90 or 45, 45, 90 can come over here. What are the special properties which work only in a right angle triangle? Especially with similarity, if you drop a perpendicular, that itself can like be a huge part. Taking a right angle triangle, dropping a perpendicular, the three triangles are similar and what all can you get from there? Can a lot of questions around that can be asked. Then Apollonius theorem, as I said, you know, you should know Apollonius theorem and 30, 60, 90 and 45, 49. So more or less this covers all the properties of a triangle, uh, lines, angles and triangle. Know them well because understand one more thing in geometry. Geometry, you can't say, okay, I will skip triangles, but I'll do quadrilaterals. Not possible. You have to do triangles, only then you can go to quadrilaterals. You have to do triangles and quadrilaterals and then you can go to circles because everything will be interconnected. Everything will be dependent. Same what we did in arithmetic. You can't do without percentages, you can't do profit and loss. And that's the whole logic. Right? So moving on to quadrilaterals and polygons, introduction to quadrilaterals, family of parallelograms. You know, I, I discuss this in a very different way. For me, everything is a parallelogram. A parallelogram, then there is a rectangle, there is a rhombus, there is a square, all these are parallelograms. Just understand them together and it will be so interesting. Once you understood parallelograms really well, then what is that extra property needed to make it into a rhombus? What is that extra one property needed to make it into a rectangle? And so on, so on. You need to understand the others. Uh, then there are two figures which are very commonly asked, which are not parallelograms, which are trapezium and kite. Uh, then we come to polygons. You know, this itself is a huge area. Uh, different kinds of polygons like a pentagon, a hexagon. What are the properties around them? So basically, what properties do we need for uh, knowing about a pentagon, hexagon? So the most common one is knowing all how to find... Generally, it's a regular pentagon, a regular hexagon, a regular, regular octagon with questions around which are asked. So, finding all the interior angles, find the exterior angles, if number of sides are given angles, if angles are given number of sides and so on. These properties are very important. And then there is hexagon which I always give special importance to. That if you, because obviously because more questions around it are asked, especially with circles and all when you do hexagon, lot of questions can be asked. So, you should know that part also really well. Concepts in circle. Now, circle, even though I've written down only five concepts, according to me, it is one topic which has the most number of concepts. You really need to know a lot, lot of concepts. So, properties of circles. Here, you need to know what is radius, what is diameter, what is tangent, what is secant, uh, what is a chord, and so on, so on. Okay. Then comes the sector and the segment of a circle. What part of the circle? So, half the circle is a semicircle. Some part of the circle is a sector. Then some part of the area of the circle is a segment and so on, so on. The formulas for that, finding how to, how to find the area of a sector, how to find the area of a segment. All those things can be really, really very important and hence you need to know that very well. Okay. Then there is the most common theorem used over here, the inscribed angle theorem. That if an angle is inscribed in the circle, what kind of properties are there? With which comes the tangent and all the related theorems, like the tangent secant theorem, the alternate segment theorem. So many, you know, with tangent, you have so many different theorems. With chords, you have other two, three theorems. Like if uh, if the two chords, uh, uh, yeah, if two chords are extended and they intersect out, that the, they become a secant. They intersect outside the circle. What kind of properties can be formed? There are so many different properties over here. Circumference in a very area of circle. Then there is a, a circle in the circle. A quadrilateral is inscribed. Or the opposite angles are 180. All those theorems you need to understand very, very, very well. So once geometry, as I said, is so much about theorems, especially this topic of circles, has so many properties, so many theorems. See, now understand one more thing. You know, a lot of students ask me, sir, do we really need to know the proof of the theorem or do I need to know the usage? If you know the proof, great, because then it will be easy to apply it that much easily. But if you don't, at least know the property well and always learn how to apply it rather than just by hearting the property. Okay, moving on to mensuration. Uh, obviously, initial part is cubes and cuboids, then comes cylinders and cones and then spheres. This part of the uh, geometry is very formula oriented. You need to know a formula. You could be 
e very good at uh, something, you understand the question, but if you do not remember in the exam, the volume of a cone ka formula, that volume of a cone is one third pi r square h, you can't do anything. You're more or less stuck. And hence, knowing your formulas over here become very, very important. Yes, understanding is important. So, especially like how to use this and the area of a trapezium to find the volume of a swimming pool. A question which was asked in CAT, like uh, there's a swimming pool which has a different depth at one side and a different depth at another side. So, there you are combining a trapezium with a three-dimensional figure and understanding that volume is area of base into height and so on, so on. That's very interesting part and that is how you learn. But initial know your formula as well, which will be very, very important. Concepts in trigonometry, you need to do, understand the introduction of trigonometry. You need to know what sine cos tan is. Uh, trigonometry happens mostly in a right angle triangle. List of formulas, at least the basic one that tan is sine upon cos or what is sine in a triangle opposite upon hypotenuse and so on, so on. List of formulas and all the values, all the basic values for sine uh, for sine of 30, 45, 60 and 90 and so on for cos, tan, cosec, sec and cot. Know all these formulas really well, they will help you. Then is the important part. Now, within trigonometry, if you want to do just one part, I would recommend you to do heights and distances and which you should do because heights and distances actually if you understand the topic, you can do it without trigonometry. If you've seen any of my videos within heights and distances, I hardly use trigonometry. I make more usage of 30, 60, 90 theorem and 45, 45, 90 theorem, with which I would say 95% of the questions can be solved. And that is why heights and distance for me is a very, very important area. I always tell students to concentrate on that really well. Then there is sine rule and cosine rule, which is a slightly higher order trigonometry. Again, if you're not very comfortable with all this, you can omit it. So geometry, you know, as an area, where do I expect you to revise? Normally, I tell people you should do arithmetic first. Second area can be algebra or geometry, depending on your comfort. If you have more comfort with algebra, start with algebra. If you have more comfort, comfort with geometry, start with geometry. Very frankly, to start geometry, you really don't need too much baggage of earlier parts. Yes, you need to know basics of quadratic or there will be some question in quadratic which will come from there or something from percentage which can be asked. But you don't need to know too many other things. Like you don't really need to know HCF, LCM. You don't need to know profit and loss. Very few things you need to know from there to do geometry. So you can always start geometry by itself. So, you know, if you are a self, you're preparing on your own. Say if you've done the first module where you've done things like little bit of percentage, some part of numbers and all, you can always do geometry second or you can do algebra, that depends on your own choice. Others who've joined a class or whatever will always take the advice of their class. Well, with that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you've gone through this. Again, as usual, if you have any queries, please post it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. Best of luck and thank you.